worship and adore you. Glorify thy name in all the earth. Glorify thy name. Glorify thy name. Glorify thy name in all the earth. Jesus, we love you. We worship and adore you. Glorify thy name in all the earth. Glorify thy name. Glorify thy name. Glorify thy name in all the earth. Spirit, we love you. We worship and adore begin with the word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for your love and mercy and goodness to us, and for just the privilege to be able to come and worship you here this morning. Lord, we just pray that your will might be done. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's turn over to 379. Brethren, we have met to worship. 379. <clears throat> see everyone, uh, and uh, even though it's uh, kind of nasty out there, it's good to be in here, amen, where it's nice and warm and dry. Uh, we uh, uh, 
appreciate the flowers this morning. The church has provided them. We have several openings uh, for the next month or two. If you would like to uh, place flowers in, and uh, you can place them in honor or memory of someone, or you can just put them in. It uh, doesn't have to be uh, in honor of any, or memory of anybody, but uh, we appreciate uh, your help uh, with that. We, uh, we're excited to announce that uh, this week we have received uh, uh, $1,365 for our uh, Lottie Moon Christmas offering, and we praise the Lord for that. Amen. Amen. And uh, so thank you for your faithful giving. If you've not given yet or wanted to give some more, uh, there's still time to give, uh, but uh, all of this goes directly to help support missions, uh, international missions all over the world. Bill and Grounds Committee, uh, we, we're going to have a meeting uh, right after church uh, in just a little bit, so uh, uh, make sure that uh, you stay for that. Uh, we have several to remember for prayer. I want to remember these that lost loved ones uh, recently. Mose lost his uh, brother-in-law, Eugene Parker. Zandra lost uh, Margie Jones, and then the family of Ken Hurst with his death last week. We have uh, several others. Uh, remember Jesse Quick. Uh, Jesse uh, went to Paulding was having some difficulty. Uh, they determined that uh, uh, she had pancreatitis from uh, infection in her gallbladder, uh, not able to do much other than give her some medicine. Uh, they did send her home Friday. Uh, spoke with Homer last night. He said she's doing a little bit better, but uh, just not a lot they can do for her. Uh, so just keep uh, her and him in your prayers. Remember Connor uh, Mason, Brittany's uh, little boy, uh, he uh, had to, had, he's been having some trouble breathing, uh, and uh, with the, where they've done some work to open his nasal passages up, um, some of that may be closing. So uh, uh, just remember them while they work through that process. Remember Chris Abbott; uh, he's been moved to Piedmont, uh, and uh, uh, he's going to he's a candidate now for a liver transplant. And uh, will probably stay in the hospital until uh, till he gets a liver. So just remember him. Remember Jay Abbott, his father. He's having uh, had infection in his foot, and uh, was admitted this weekend to Douglas General for so they could treat him with medicine. Uh, continue to remember Glenn uh, Rainwater Candy's husband. Uh, he's a little bit better, uh, but uh, just continue to pray for him. And then remember also uh, Candy's brother uh, Jesse. Uh, he, his lung cancer has come back and uh, he's just not had a good week and uh, we'll start chemo uh, next week, did you say? Uh, so remember him. And remember Joan Yance's uh, daughter, Kelly Breeden. Uh, she's had uh, uh, five or six surgeries already on her legs uh, where she broke both of them. Uh, she's supposed to have another surgery this morning, uh, Joan said, and then uh, she'll go to rehab for at least two weeks. Uh, she's in Alabama at UAB, so remember her. Anything else we need to mention? Anything else? Any unspoken concerns? All right, let's pray. Dearly Father, we just thank you for, again, the privilege for us to be able to come and to gather and to meet in this place. Lord, we thank you for the, the privilege of prayer. And the fact, Lord, that when we gather together and we unite our hearts, Lord, we have the assurance that you hear our prayers and you'll answer according to your will. Lord, we just want to pray for our country. Uh, Lord, we uh, pray especially for these on our prayer list. We pray, Lord, for uh, these we've mentioned and for any unspoken concerns. Lord, just be with each and every need and do what only you can do. But, Lord, I pray especially for us here today. Lord, that we might experience your presence and your power. Lord, that uh, we might, uh, from our encounter with you through this service, uh, that we might be changed, Lord, uh, as we seek to be faithful to you. Have your way in our hearts and lives. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Turn it over to 595 now, send the light, 595. <coughs>
boats to rescue, there are souls to save. Send the light, send the light, send the light, the blessed gospel light. Let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light. Let it shine forevermore. We have heard the Macedonian call today. Send the light, send the light. And a golden offering at the cross we lay. Send the light, send the light. Send the light, the blessed gospel light. Let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light. Let it shine forevermore. Let us pray that grace may everywhere abound. Send the light, send the light. And a Christ-like spirit everywhere be found. Send the light, send the light. Send the light, the blessed gospel light. Let it shine forevermore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine forevermore. Let us not grow weary in the work of love. Send the light, send the light. Let us gather jewels for a crown above. Send the light, send the light, send the light. Blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine forevermore. Amen. Now you'll pray to the choir this morning.
thank the choir. This morning, I want you to, uh, I want to ask you to turn to a familiar passage, uh, John 14. Uh, we're going to look at verses 1, one through 6. Uh, we've looked at this before, but I uh, just feel drawn back to it. been thinking about heaven a lot uh, this week, and I uh, feel we need to explore this. John chapter 14, Uh, we'll begin reading with verse 1. If you found it, if you would please stand as we honor the reading of God's word. And the word of God says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whither I go, you know, and the way you know. Then Thomas said unto him, Lord, we we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? And Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your goodness and mercy. We thank you for just the privilege to be here. Lord, I'm especially grateful for your word that tells us, uh, Lord, not only about you, about salvation, about how we're to live here on this earth. But Lord, tells us about heaven, uh, that there is such a place. Lord, uh, help us to set our eyes on heaven and let that be our goal, our focus, as we journey through this earth on our way to heaven. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Heaven. You know, heaven is an interesting topic. Uh, Some people want to deny the existence of hell. A lot of people want to deny the existence of hell, but but when you talk about heaven, everybody kind of likes that idea. There's all kinds of concepts about heaven. Most, uh, Most every culture has some kind of idea about Uh, some form of state after uh, life on this earth is over. Now, I I want to, we talked about this just a little bit when uh, we went through the book of Genesis. Now, uh, anthropologists and uh, others uh, from the academic setting, they would tell us that the reason why Christianity Uh, Christians talk about the afterlife is because we got the idea uh, from all these other cultures. Folks, that's hogwash. Where did they get the idea? The reason why they also have this idea of the afterlife is because it came from God. It came from Adam and Eve. And they just didn't like the version that God gave them, so they kind of rewrote it. But heaven is real. Have you ever noticed, though, that when we talk about heaven, that uh, most people would, if you say, uh, uh, are you going to go to hell, what do most people say? No! I've known a few rough characters, and they would, uh, they would say, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go to hell. Most people say, oh, no. And if you ask them if they're going to go to heaven, most people will say, oh, I'm going Oh, yeah. Uh, they think that somehow, some way, magically, uh, we're, we're just all going to end up there together. Uh, but, folks, not everybody's going to go to heaven. Amen? That's, uh, that's why Jesus came. If, if everybody was going to end up in heaven, Jesus wouldn't have had to come. But, folks, heaven is a, is a wonderful thing. And, and we need to live and look for that day uh, when when heaven is where we are. There is the the song of the uncloudy day. Oh, they tell me of a home far beyond the skies. Oh, they tell me of a home far away. 
Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an uncloudy day. Oh, they tell me of a home where my friends have gone. Oh, they tell me of that land far away where the tree of life in eternal bloom sheds its fragrance through the unclouded day. Oh, they tell me of a king in his beauty there, and they tell me that mine eyes shall behold where he sits on his throne that is whiter than snow in the city that is made of gold. Oh, they tell me that he smiles on his children there, and his smile drives their sorrows away. And they tell me that no tears ever come again in that lovely land of the unclouded day. There's a lot of ideas about heaven. Uh, been a lot of talk uh, over the last 20 years about supposedly people that have died and gone to heaven and come back. I want to caution you about those stories. I'm not saying that they're not true, but we need to be careful that we don't put more uh, emphasis on their story and their account than what the Bible says about heaven. Amen? Uh, it's kind of like, uh, uh, I remember uh, in the church we grew up in, uh, in Memphis, uh, we were talking about um, uh, Moses uh, and uh, leading the people uh, through Israel or something. I don't remember exactly the specific details. But one of the men in the church got to arguing with the Bible teacher uh, that about something that he said happened. And finally the teacher said, where are you getting this information? And he said it was in the movie Ben-Hur. It's got to be true. No. Amen. We, we, need to, we need to go by what God's word says. When we get to the 14th chapter, this is a, a long, lengthy uh, uh, section uh, after the Lord's Supper, uh, where he instituted the Lord's Supper and he's talking to his disciples. Uh, he's he's going to end up in the Garden of Gethsemane. Uh, he's, uh, uh, I always say about this verse uh, 1, where he says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. This is at the point where he's finally gotten his disciples to understand he was leaving them. Uh, his disciples up to this point had had selective hearing. Jesus has been telling them that he wasn't going to stay long. He, he has been telling them that he was going to suffer and die on the cross, but they didn't hear that because that wasn't part of what they thought the Messiah was going to do. But finally, he's gotten them to understand he's leaving. He's leaving. And they're, they're tore up about it. They're distraught. They can't believe it. They don't understand why he would leave them. This is not at all what, what they thought was going to happen. And they can't understand why God would do such a thing. Jesus says these very powerful words. Let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. Folks, that's, that's a good phrase for us to remember. Not just as we think about heaven and, and uh, getting to the end of our life, but it's, it's good advice for us throughout life. Uh, that, that, uh, that word trouble, it means to stir up. Uh, <clears throat> means, uh, uh, how many of you have a, a washing machine at home? Anybody got a washing machine at home? David, you got one at home? All right, all right, good. Your clothes are clean? No, don't answer that. I don't no, I'm just now, now, I understand it's not true in all washing machines today because of highfalutin technology. But in the washing machine that we used to have, we all had an agitator in our washing machine. Anybody remember an agitator? It, it, was, it was right in the middle. Tim, you remember an agitator? It was right in the middle. And when you turned that washing machine on, that thing would go up and down, up and spin, up and down. It kept that water stirred up so the soap would work and so uh, it, it would break those stains uh, uh, and, and clean the clothes. 
Now here in this passage, this word is used figuratively to refer to our hearts being stirred up. And that's what, that's what was happening with the disciples. They were tore up. They were distraught. They, they were like, how can we continue? And folks, sometimes as we go through life and as we face uncertainties, as we face trials, as we face things we don't understand, we, get, we can get all tore up inside. Amen? And when we get all tore up, several things happen. Primarily, we stop functioning like we should. We quit, uh, we get our eyes off of Jesus uh, and, and we start, we get consumed with whatever it is that we're distressed over and, and we're not serving the Lord like we should besides being tied up in knots. And Jesus says to his disciples and he says to us, let not your heart be troubled. Don't get to that point. You believe in God, believe also in me. Uh, he's saying, God's still in control. See, we, we live under the illusion that we are in control of our life. And when things happen outside of our control, when things happen that we don't want to have happen, uh, when, when, when sickness comes or death or our troubles come. We get all tore up because there's nothing we can do about it. It wasn't what we planned. It wasn't how we thought things were going to happen. It's not what we want. Dear friends, we need to come to the realization it ain't ever going to be about us because we're not in control. Amen? But God is. That's what Jesus is saying here. Okay, just because you don't understand something, that's okay because God understands it. Amen? Whenever we face something in life we don't understand, we don't like, and we don't know how things are going to turn out, we need to have faith because God knows about it. Sometimes we go to the doctor's office and... Uh, Maybe we've been sick or had some issues. Some blood work comes back. and We go to the doctor and then the doctor says, well, I hate to tell you, but you've got cancer. And immediately our, our world is turned upside down. We were not expecting that. God knew. Amen. It catches us off guard. It doesn't catch God off guard. In our first, uh, you, know, you know, I remember when uh, Daddy uh, was diagnosed with Parkinson's and he was all distraught and uh, he was talking to the doctor and, and he asked her, he says, am I going to die? And she said, yeah. And he's like, no, you don't understand. Am I going to die with Parkinson's? She said, yes. You ain't going to get rid of it. Finally, Daddy asked the question he really meant was, how long, have I, how long have I got? And the doctor said, oh, I think I can keep you going about 30 years. And he said he got to think about that, didn't know if he wanted to go that long. But, you know, you know we want to know what's going to happen. How long do we have? Well, folks, we, we need to understand, we don't have to know. Because God knows. And we need to be willing to trust Him. That's what Jesus is telling the disciples. That's what he's telling us with life right now. Don't let your life be turned upside down because of your circumstances and the situations that you're facing. Instead, just have faith and trust God. Because Jesus said, uh, there's more going on here than you know. Jesus said, in my Father's house, many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Uh, see, the disciples were thinking 
Um, oh Lord, Jesus is leaving. That's it. That's it. He's done. But folks, Jesus says, oh no. I'm, I'm doing the Father's work. Amen. And you see, we need to see as we face life's challenges and, and, and even, even if uh, we get some news we don't want to get, even if, if it says, you know, hey, you, you don't have long to live. It doesn't mean it's the end. God's still at work. God still has work for us. And, and even when this life is over, God still has a plan for us. Jesus says, uh, I'm going to my father's house. I like that he, he didn't say I'm going to heaven. That's what he's talking about. He said, I'm going to my father's house. Uh, all throughout the Gospel of John, Jesus refers to the unity and the oneness of him and his father. Uh, and, and he even says here in this section, if you've seen me, you've seen the father because of their oneness of their unity. And he, he doesn't say, I'm going to go to heaven. He says, I'm going to my father's house. But he's talking about heaven, amen? And, and uh, he, he says, this is not my end. But I've got work to do. Uh, and I'm going to my father's house. You know, uh, uh, you know we, we lived... We lived in a lot of different places growing up, with Daddy being in the Navy. We moved about every three or four years until he retired. Lived in, uh, lived in a lot of houses over the years. And you know what? Every one of them was home. You know why they were home? Because my mama lived there. Amen? That's what made it home. And folks, we need to understand that heaven is about God because it is His house. Notice it's where He dwells. Everything there belongs to Him. It's His. Uh, he's not renting. He's not leasing. It is His forever. Everything there is subject to His rule. Folks, God is sovereign. He is over everything. And uh, even though there are people here on this earth that uh, uh, refuse to acknowledge His sovereignty in, in their life, doesn't mean He's still not sovereign over them. But folks, uh, uh, there's coming a day when we're going to get to heaven and everybody and everything is going to be sovereign over. He's going to be sovereign over everything. They're having a little bit of trouble in South Atlanta. Antifa is at work. The city of Atlanta is trying to build a, a compound to train their police officers and firemen. And, and uh, Antifa is trying to save the forest that is part of the dump, part of a work farm, part of a lot of other stuff. They act like it's some pristine uh, virgin forest that uh, the city of Atlanta is trying to uh, violate, but it's not. Well, uh, they've done all kinds of things. Uh, one of theirs was shot and killed the other day because he started shooting at the cops and hit one of them. Folks, when you shoot at a cop, you better expect them to shoot back. And they killed him. So they had a night of rage last night tore up a few things, but in their official response, they said, we don't consider burning property and tearing up stuff and businesses violence. That's not violence. Uh, we're, just, we're just acting in kind. Folks, they're crazy. Folks, but we, we see that over and over again in this world, amen? But folks, there's coming a day where everybody in heaven, when we get to heaven... Everybody there will be subject to His rule and they will obey Him and submit to Him and nobody will rebel against Him.
We won't get to heaven and say, man, I remember the good old days because we'll be living the good old days. Amen? Neither will, neither will I get up there and say, everybody has lost their minds. We'll have our minds up there. Amen? Because everything will be subject to His rule. Everybody will love God. Everybody in heaven. Won't that be wonderful? Uh, everybody will be there to love and worship and praise Him. Everything in heaven, because it's His house, it's His home, it'll reflect the qualities and characteristics of God. Think about this. It'll be filled with peace, love, joy, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There'll be no sin. There'll be no evil or wickedness. There'll be no sickness or death. No heartache, no pain. No trial or tribulation. Only joy, peace, and contentment. It'll contain all that is true and perfect. Paul tells us uh, in 1 Corinthians, we'll get a new body. We'll get a body that won't wear out. We'll get a body that uh, won't fall apart. We will get a body that will last forever. That, that always blows my mind when I hear people say they want to live forever in this body. Folks, I'm, I'm smart enough to know I'm 60, uh, be 63 this year. I'm smart enough to know I don't want to live forever in this body. Because every year something happens. Every year something breaks. Every year something. I go to the doctor and they go, now they'll say, well, you know, you're 63 now. What do you want me to do? I want you to fix the problems, you know. But folks, when we get to heaven, we're going to get a new body that will last forever. It will be eternal. It will be immortal. And, and he says here, not only it's his father's house and it'll reflect the character of God, but he says it'll have many mansions. Now, uh, I, I may upset a few of them. The King James has mansions. The word there is not in the Greek mansions, it's just rooms. And I know some people, have, uh, there's a song about it, and some people are, you know, they think that when they're going to get to heaven, uh, they're going to have this uh, beautiful mansion up on the hillside. I'm not so sure. But folks, what this says is we'll have a place to stay. And it'll be beautiful, amen? Because it'll be God. And you see, the, the, problem, the problem I see with, with wanting to focus on the mansion is, look at what I'm going to get. Because, folks, when we get to heaven and we see God, we ain't going to care where we stay. We just want to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen? And, uh, uh, and, and Jesus is saying here, there's plenty of room for everyone who comes. There's plenty of room. Remember, uh, remember when Joseph and Mary went to the inn? Sorry, no room. No room. But folks, Jesus said there'll be plenty of room in heaven. But notice also here that Jesus says, uh, uh, well, let me back up just a second. He says, in, in my Father's house are many mansions. And notice that next phrase. If it were not so, I would have told you. If it were not so, I would have told you. That's important. That speaks of the relationship that we have with Jesus because of what he's done for us. Jesus is telling you, I'm not lying to you. I'm telling it to you straight. In fact, Jesus says, if, if, if this wasn't true, 
if there wasn't going to be a place for you, if there wasn't a heaven, uh, then I'd, te- I'd just tell you. I'd just tell you. You know, uh, there's some folks who, uh, some people, they, for whatever reason, they, they can't help but lie. By the way, lying's a sin, right? We shouldn't lie about anything. But some people, they can't help. They open their mouth and say something, and you're like, oh, Lord, what are they lying about now? You know, amen? You don't believe nothing they say. And sadly, even when they tell you the truth, you don't believe them because everything out of their mouth is a lie. Then there are some people who if they tell you something, they're going to do it. Folks, if my mama said, uh, I'm going to tear you up when I get home, I had no doubt in my mind she's going to tear me up. My dad ever said, son, I'm going to be over there and help you. You need help. I'm coming. He'd come. Whatever my dad said he was going to do, he did exactly what he said he did. He never, he never promised stuff thinking, oh, nah, I'm not going to do that. No, if he promised it, if he said he was going to do it, he did. Folks, do you, do you see? Jesus is saying, I promise you, I'm telling you the truth. And I'm going to prepare a place for you. He's going to make sure everything's just right. Just right. Uh, Isn't that wonderful? Uh, Jesus is preparing a place for every person who has trusted him as his Lord and Savior. You ever uh, ever gone on a trip and Maybe you go to a motel you had reservations at and uh, you get there and they go, sorry, we have no record. We have no record. You ever had that happen, David? Not really. Okay, good. That's, that's a good thing. Uh, we've, we've, uh, we've made some reservations at hotels before and, and uh, uh, showed up in the room and they wasn't ready for us. They wouldn't be ready for us in a month. You know, it was bad. It was bad. But folks, Jesus is preparing something for every room, and there's room for everybody. Amen? Then notice, if I go and prepare a place for you, that means I'm coming back to get you. Amen? Isn't that wonderful? If I go to prepare a place, I'm coming for you. I'm not going to forget you. I'm not going to leave you behind. I'm coming for you. Folks, Jesus is coming back. He's coming back. He's coming back. He's going to ever, every person who's trusted Him as their Lord and Savior, He's coming back for us one day. I want you to notice something else. Last part of verse 3. Not only is he coming back, but he says, I will receive you unto myself, that where I am, you may be also. That word receive uh, is, a, is a compound word that means uh, to receive someone next to you. Uh, and, and Jesus is saying, once he comes for us, we will be with him forever. Forever. Uh, we, uh, we've got three kittens at home. Uh, I asked y'all to take them last week. Nobody volunteered. I'm going to throw that out there again. 
Anybody, anybody want some really sweet kittens? I might even pay you some money to take them. No. Uh, but, folks, uh, when, when I'm in the house, wherever I am, they are. Doesn't matter. Uh, they're they're going to be right behind me. They're going to be right beside me. Uh, they, uh, they're going to follow me everywhere I go. I can't get away from them. Folks, that's what it's going to be like when we see Jesus. Amen? Except he's not going to try to get rid of us like I am. That's a bad example. That was really bad. But he's going to draw us to himself. Hang on to us so that we are right by His self. So that wherever He is, we will be there forever. Jesus said, uh, where I'm going, you know where I'm going. You know I'm going to heaven and you know how to get there. Thomas said, Lord, uh, we don't. See, in uh, their day, there was still a lot of confusion. There were some who believed in heaven, some who didn't. Some who believed in the resurrection, even the Jews. Some who believed in the resurrection, some who did not. Uh, what do you, uh, you know, what, what do you have to do to make sure that you're going to go? Jesus says, all right, Thomas, I'll answer that. I'm the way, the truth. In the lie. In other words, the only way we can have be certain that we're going to go to heaven, that we're going to be in our home in heaven with, with our heavenly Father, is, is if we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. He is the only way. Now, we we live in a society where where people have lost their minds and they're not thinking rationally, but uh, they want to say there are many ways to get to heaven. Folks, I, I want to I, I want to warn you. I, I want to caution you. Uh, they're saying in our churches even. That believers, people who claim to know the Lord, are, are even falling for this and say, "Well, there's many ways to, we're, you know, we're 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 gonna we're gonna all end up there together." No, we're not. And that's not me being ugly. That's me just proclaiming the truth of the Word of God. Only those who've repented of their sins and trusted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, they're the only one. Because folks, I say this over and over again, if there was any other way, Jesus never would have come. But there is no other way. He is the only way. That's why He came. Because He loved us so much. We can't do it our way. We can't do it the way that makes sense to us. We have to trust Him and repent of our sins. So I have to ask, do you know Him? Are you certain? Do you have certainty that, that if you were to die right now, you would spend eternity in heaven because the Lord has a place prepared for you? Do you know that? I've talked to people over the years. I, I talked to one preacher of another denomination and he told me, he says, I don't think anybody's going to know till they get there. And I, I just shook my head. Folks, God wants us to know if we belong to Him or not. If my grandmother was concerned about me knowing that I was a Hennessy and not ever forget that I was a Hennessy, I think God cares more about me knowing that I'm a child of God than my grandmother wanted me to know I was a Hennessy. Amen? And not only did my grandmother tell me that and remind me of that, but 
that I see my grandfather in me. The lie my brother told me that I was adopted is not true. Besides, he looks just like me. If I'm adopted, he is too. No. I'm picking on him. He didn't. I don't think he told me I was adopted. He probably did. I just don't remember. But I, I know. I can tell it by the things I do that I am my grandfather's son. Folks, God wants you to know if you're his child. He wants you to know if he's got a place for you. There, there won't be any doubt. And that's why it's imperative for us to settle this issue. But preacher, i got plenty of time for that. No, you don't. No, you don't. If you're here today, or if you're listening online, and, and you, you come across this, and, and you have any question or any doubt, this is an opportunity that God has given you to settle this issue right now. Not settle it in 10 years or 20 years. Settle it today. If there's any question. I have observed over the years. Personally and in, in, in general. That oftentimes We stress over. The little thing. And we're kind of ambivalent toward the big things. I'm amazed when people say, Preacher, I don't know if I'm going to go to heaven or not, but it'll, it'll all work out. <clears throat> but yet, but yet you, you're worried about your checkbook not balancing. And you're missing 30 cents. And that keeps you up at night. Folks, you ought to be keep staying up at night worried about whether or not you're a child of God or not. You know Jesus. If not, you're not going to heaven until you do. But you can if you'll just repent and trust Jesus as your Lord and Savior and give Him your heart and your life. And then heaven will be your eternal home. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your love and mercy and goodness to us and for the privilege to be here in this place. Lord, I pray that uh, we might all be encouraged today as we look to you and trust you. Lord, that uh, one of these days we're, we're going to leave this whole world and the Lord's going to come back and get us and we're going to spend the rest of eternity in heaven. Lord, what a grand and glorious thing that's going to be. Words are inadequate. To express that. Lord I pray especially this morning. If there's one here today. Who does not know you as a Lord and Savior. That they would trust you today. That they would settle this issue for all of eternity. So that they can have the certainty. That they know you and see you working in their life. See the evidence because of their faith in you. That they are truly a child. Have your way in hearts and lives in the precious name of Jesus we pray.